Look at these graphs. Here is the International Energy Agency's predictions of solar growth through the years, and here is the reality. Predictions about the growth of solar power have been wrong every single year. Would you trust a prediction with a 0% accuracy rate? What happened? Why have we constantly underestimated solar power growth? There's a little secret. It isn't because massive corporations decided to care about the environment. Using solar is no longer a green decision. It's an economic one. Solar got a bad reputation in the mid-2000s when Germany's eco-friendly government decided to subsidize it. They went and paid solar energy producers with an above market rate subsidy called a feed-in tariff to produce their energy. That basically means that they guaranteed those producers a high price to sell their energy, no matter the cost. Now while this in large part caused the expensive reputation that solar is still trying to shake today, it also kick-started the growth of the industry and the rapid decrease in cost that we've seen since the mid-2000s. China's investments in renewables helped drive astonishing price drops across the industry, leading to record levels of new wind and solar installations all over the world in recent years. Since the Germans began this policy in 2005, the price per watt of solar has gone from $4 per watt to under 20 cents per watt. It's a significant point that every day as much energy falls on the earth from the sun as has been used in the whole history of our civilization. Last year, the IEA even reported that solar is now the cheapest form of electricity in history. Even though this does vary by factors like climate and longitude, it's worth noting that billions of people still live in solar-rich environments. Solar growth has gone up so fast that the IEA revised their 2040 predictions to be 43% higher than they were just three years ago. They said that the reason for this is because solar power is now 20 to 50% cheaper depending on the use case than it was a few years ago. In 2022, we added more solar capacity than we added up until 2015 combined. For a random person with a house or business, the average solar payback period is now only five to nine years. Which really isn't that bad. It's like, instead of renting your electricity, you're buying it and owning the production. I also decided to run the numbers myself, but there's a lot of factors involved, like whether or not your roof is south-facing, what kind of region or climate you live in, what your longitude is. I found that a small factory, using about 240 kilowatt hours a day, could pay off their solar bills in as little as six years, and in ideal conditions, could do it in almost three. That's amazing. You can check out these calculations in the description below to check for yourself. Solar power price decreases have accelerated the growth of solar in the last few years, but there's something else that's also important. The energy crisis and the war in Ukraine. Russia's invasion of Ukraine has exacerbated a global energy crisis, felt most acutely in Europe, who is particularly reliant on Russian gas. Renewable energy is no longer just a green issue, it's also a national security issue. Check out this graph. Of all of the inflation experienced by European countries in the last couple of years, the vast majority of it has been because of energy, primarily in the eastern countries that were really reliant on Russian gas. This really echoes the 1970s, where high oil prices spiked the prices of goods and services. We're in an energy crisis now, and will be for some time to come. We have at present an absolute shortage of natural gas. We cannot produce as much as we can use. It impacts nearly every industry, from food production, to shipping and logistics, to chemical production, factory output, and so much more. Oil literally and metaphorically greases the gears of our economies. It's no surprise now that with limited supply and price hikes, countries are looking towards solar energy as a means of energy independence and stability. And all of this isn't even mentioning how easy solar panels are. There are no wind turbine eyesores on the horizon, no nuclear power regulation headaches or long construction times, no major approval backlogs or serious red tape, and no dams flooding valleys. Just panels that can be thrown up in a field or on a building. Oh, and by the way, there's literally a myth that it takes more energy to produce a solar panel than it produces in its lifetime. It's just a myth. This German study shows clearly that solar power becomes energy positive in a maximum of 1.2 years, meaning it produces more energy than it took to produce in as little as a year, even in a cloudy country like Germany. Ah, but wait. There is a problem. It's the duck curve. Quack. Energy demand looks like this throughout the day. People increase their energy demand when they come home from work and turn on their appliances like cookers. But of course, solar power looks like this because the sun only shines in the day and it doesn't hit that high demand period in the evening, let alone at night. 
So how do we fix this? We mainly fix it with energy storage, like pumped hydroelectric. This is the most common and mature form of energy storage we have right now. It involves pumping water uphill into a reservoir during periods of low energy demand and releasing it to generate electricity during periods of high demand. There's also different types of batteries like lithium ion, solid state, and flow batteries, each with different pros and cons. There have even been some promising developments with sodium ion batteries in just the last few months, which could provide an actually cheap battery solution. In addition to this, there's compressed air energy storage, flywheel energy, thermal energy storage, and hydrogen production. The jury is still out on which one of these is going to be the most effective in the future. It's probably going to be a combination of them. For example, you can substitute coal for hydrogen in steel production, but if you want to power your house at night, then hydrogen's probably not a good idea, because it's expensive and inefficient to produce. Batteries are probably better for that. But how do we build all of this infrastructure? As solar becomes cheaper and cheaper, it also makes storage more and more viable. The same duck curve that causes problems for the grid does cause opportunities for energy savers. If energy is cheap here, then that means you could develop a technology, buy energy when it's cheap, and sell it when it becomes expensive at night. California has even seen its energy prices go negative at the peak of the day when solar power is at max production, meaning they would literally pay you to use energy, for example, by storing it in a battery. I think people might have been taking the wrong lesson from those German feed-in tariffs. They helped solar power go from where it was at the high price in 2005 down to what it is right now. Maybe we should institute those same feed-in tariffs for solar, but for storage instead. The quote, solar problem, is now just a problem of batteries and storage. Maybe it just needs a push. The market incentives for developing grid-scale energy storage are apparent. Tesla, for example, is one of the big players trying to create grid-scale battery solutions. But if we want to do it as quickly as possible for the sake of the climate, then we're probably going to want to invest more into R&D, just like we did with solar. If we've been systematically underestimating the growth of solar power, the cost reductions that it's made, and the increases in efficiency, then we might be making the same mistakes with energy storage.